All right, welcome to Hydroponics 101. This video is gonna tell you everything that you need to know to get growing. So let's get started. So I went ahead and made a massive 12 page guide to go right along with this video. It's gonna be my script more or less. I'm gonna keep reverting back to it. I highly suggest that you download it for free over at homogrowthhydroponics.com or via the link in the description box or right here. All right, so before I get too deep in here, and if you're just interested in like the tools you need to get started and what you really need to get growing and you kind of already have a general idea about hydroponics and what you're gonna do, check out this link right here. Um, also in the description box, I have all of the tools that you're gonna need to get started. Uh, everything that you're gonna need to really get growing is gonna be there at my affiliate store. So make sure you check that out if you are in the market for any of this stuff. All right, so let's get going. First section, is hydroponics explained. I have a lot of friends when they see my hydroponic gardens, they're completely beside themselves and have so many questions as to like how the roots aren't drowning, how do they get air, how they aren't rotting in this setup. And the way that I try to explain it to them is like this. So when you have a plant in soil, the roots are in the soil and the way that they get their nutrients is actually via the water. So you pour water on top, the water filters through the soil, it collects all the little bits of nutrients, and once it reaches the roots, the roots absorb the water and tiny microscopic bits of nutrients via osmosis, and then move that water throughout the plant, getting the nutrients to where they need to go. But ultimately, plants get their nutrients from water, no matter where they're grown. So when you look at hydroponics, all we're simply doing is removing the middleman, removing the substrate of dirt, which actually gets in the way. Because as we found out, when you suspend roots just in water and deliver them their nutrients directly to the roots, you're gonna see substantial growth. Generally, twice the growth, but some plants actually will grow three times as large and fast in a hydroponic setup. All right, first thing I wanna talk about are the different types of hydroponic gardens. I'm not gonna get into all of the sub gardens because once you break it down, I mean, there are so many different types of variations of variations of gardens. But what you're gonna realize is the need for these different types of hydroponic gardens comes with the need for different root variations. Um, in other words, different plants are gonna require different hydroponic gardens. That's why all these different gardens exist. It's not just a one size fits all type situation, which I mean, tower gardens are pretty close to that but you can't grow root vegetables in tower gardens. You can only grow things with a stem that's gonna be about yay big in tower gardens. So there still are limitations to where a DWC or a cracky garden would actually be better for much larger plants. We're gonna get into all that. Let's talk about cracky gardens. So the cracky garden taking the nation by storm, named after Bernard Cracky, who is a researcher at the University of Hawaii, uh, hasn't really been around for all that long. What he has coined it as is the non-circulating passive hydroponic method. And what you're doing here is suspending a plant in a vat of nutrient water and allowing that water to be absorbed and or evaporate at the same rate that the roots are gonna be requiring oxygen. So you only refill a cracky garden when it's down to about one third of nutrient water. So it really is passive. It's very much a set it and forget it. That usually takes a month to a couple months depending on what you're growing. So cracky method is really an amazing, super, super simple, super easy way to get things done. I have tons of videos on the cracky method right here. So check out that playlist if that sounds like something you'd be really interested in. All right, so now moving to the deep water culture, the DWC. This takes the same principles as the cracky method with suspending your roots in a vat of nutrient water, except with this, you're gonna leave your nutrient water topped off. And in order to get oxygen to our roots, we're gonna install an air stone. So we leave our nutrients always topped off, always to the desired EC, and then we make sure that we're getting tons of oxygen to the roots, tons of oxygen into the water uh, through an air stone. So that's a deep water culture. All right, so next up is the drip method. So I think the drip method really is like the first hydroponic method that gets close to or really is part of an aeroponic method uh, because what we're doing is suspending the roots in air and then delivering the nutrient water to the top of the roots via a drip. So it really is, for lack of a better term, an aeroponic garden. In fact, I will usually refer to tower gardens as being a drip setup, uh, even though they're typically referred to as an aeroponic garden. I guess drip hydroponics is technically aeroponics if you wanna get real pedantic about it. All right, so next up on our list of hydroponic garden types is ebb and flow. 
Now you can do some really, really cool ebb and flow gardens, or you can also do extremely simple ebb and flow gardens. My very first hydroponic garden was an ebb and flow aquaponic system with just one gravel filled pit with plants planted in it and a drain coming in on one end and then going back into the tank on the other end. It was extremely simple and it was fantastic. And then I've also seen amazing ebb and flow setups with like a dozen buckets and uh, you know a vat of water that's being constantly aerated. And then that water gets moved through these vats in a system that also is very aeroponic heavy. Uh, these aren't technically considered aeroponic gardens, but if you look at the definition, any plant that's being suspended in air and then the water is being delivered in a spray or a drip or anyway, really, uh, is aeroponic. Next up is the increasingly popular nutrient film technique. Now for this, it's very simple and usually what you're going to grow is uh, lettuce or uh, shallow rooted plants like um, herbs in the mint family maybe. Now I th the most popular ones that I'm seeing these days are with just like these plastic gutters that are laid down sideways and have holes drilled in them uh, where the plants are suspended and the roots touch the bottom where a very small amount of water is running uh, constantly through the bottom. And you can lay out rows and rows of these to cover a large surface area. So as far as horizontal hydroponic growing goes, NFT is really, really hard to beat when it comes to lettuce and it's a massive production. The last hydroponic garden technique or style is aeroponics. Like I said, just suspending your roots in air and delivering water, nutrients, uh, and a spray, a mist through the drip method and ebb and flow is technically uh, considered aeroponics. There are a couple types of aeroponic gardens that really take that to the next level, especially high pressure aeroponics, though the builds are a lot more complicated. Check out this video if you're interested in aeroponic builds. Um, low pressure aeroponics are a lot more user friendly. I am currently working on a low pressure aeroponic tower garden, so make sure you're subscribed if that sounds like something you'd be interested in. Aeroponics really is the epitome the best of the best. And the idea behind it, behind taking aeroponics to the next level, high pressure aeroponics in particular and fog ponics, is to deliver that perfect balance of air to water. Because you gotta remember, air contains carbon dioxide. Carbon is actually the building block for these plants. So uh, along with the nutrient intake, obviously you have a lot of minerals in there and a lot of nutrients that your plant's gonna need to synthesize to build as well. Uh, carbon is a huge one of them that it's gonna get from the air. Okay, moving on to a big question mark for a lot of people. What is a pH and how do I adjust it? So your pH is just a numerical representation of where it falls between acidic and base. So this is between zero for very acidic and 14 for extremely basic. I'll say like 70% of most plants actually thrive at a pH right in the middle at about 7.0. But before you plant your plants, make sure you hop on Google, type it in, figure out what your pH is and set your garden to that. I'm not just saying go ahead and set it all to 7.0 because there are a lot of plants like blueberries that really like them way more acidic, like a 4.5 to 5 pH. Um, so make sure you're checking your plant's pH before you set it in your garden. And if you're doing a tower garden or a garden with a lot of plants, try to write all the pH values down and see if there's one that's way off and maybe that one should be cut out of the mix. Like I said, everything that I have shown and listed in the guide here, you can pick up via these links. Uh, this is the pH meter that I've used for a while. It also has a built-in thermometer. I gave up the iodine a long time ago, but I still have this one lying around because I like to test my calibration to make sure it's calibrated properly. And of course you have pH up or down. In the guide, I have a huge section on nutrients. I break down all the different nutrients, what they're gonna do for your plant, why you need them, some of the different deficiencies. I really try to break it down in the guide for you, but in this video, I'm not gonna go over all those little details. I have a video here about nutrients if you're interested more in the minutia, the NPK. What I wanna to talk to you guys about is a great set of nutrients to get started with. Um, so if you're looking to pick up some nutrients and you don't know anything about hydroponic nutrients, which ones to get, the ones I started with and I've been using is kind of my basic nutrients. I use a lot of different nutrients for different plants uh, depending on what results I want. But for my tower gardens and for my larger kind of multi-purpose gardens, I use the general hydroponic flora series. I just found it to be really, really easy and simple to understand. This isn't like a paid advertisement. I'm just really just trying to help you and point you in the right direction to get you some nutrients that are gonna be good for you. 
Um, I know there are a lot of other nutrients out there, and I'm sure there are tons that are just as good, if not better, uh, that are maybe even easier to understand. I'm just giving you my experience. This is what I used, and I had really good results with the General Hydroponics Flora Series. They contain all of the macro and micronutrients you're gonna need. You might wanna consider picking up some cow mag, depending on what else you're growing, if you're gonna be doing like cilantro, tomatoes, other things that are gonna be really heavy uh, in the demand for calcium and magnesium. So let me know in the description box down below if you have any questions or comments, or even better, over on the forum at humblegrowthhydroponics.com. I'll see you guys over there. Let's keep growing together.